Welcome to Honest News. Second Peter, chapter 2, and verse 1. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word. I'm going to be dealing with the subject of arrogance. Arrogance. But they were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, their dangerous ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to re be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to, del to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lusts of uncleanness and despise government. Hmm. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Are you listening? Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not reeling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. 
having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosser, who love the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with the man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried without a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in era. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for another warning. Help us, Lord, to live a humble life, to live humbly before our God, to walk humbly. Help us, Lord, to be meek and humble. We ask you to bless this word as we minister. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was listening recently to an interview with Donald Trump, and that word came to me. Holy Spirit brought that back to my remembrance. Swelling words of vanity. So I naturally, I looked it up. And this is where this verse sits. In the context of all these other verses I just read to you. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. They are lure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Are you listening? This not only describes the great whore of Babylon, this one world religious system, but it also describes the president of the United States. I may know that. It obviously does, because as I was listening to an interview about Donald Trump, the Holy Spirit, remember Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he says he will bring to remembrance, he will bring to your remembrance those things which I have said, or those things that are in the Word, right? Those things that are in the Scripture. And the Holy Spirit brought this to my remembrance, the Scripture. When they speak, 
great swelling words of vanity. So I looked up this word swelling and it means arrogant, insolent, arrogant. Listening. And that's who represents the evangelicals. Hello. Jude, chapter 1, verse 16. These are murmurous, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Why? Having men's person, persons in admiration. Because of what reason? Because of advantage. In other words, they're taking advantage of you. Yeah. That's their purpose. Is to take advantage of you. All the way from the harlot whore of Babylon to the White House. Amen. And I said this in the previous message. How many know that God, it, Jesus, is not a Republican? Amen. When is it anywhere that God's people are supposed to be trying to fashion themselves to be Republicans? Because when you're trying to be like an, a Republican, you're trying to be not like a Democrat. But how many know that's not the standard that God's people have been given to live to? You and I are not supposed to be living to the standard of a Republican, which is nothing more than hypocrisy. Like one rich man recently said, they both come from the same camp, same club. And they do. They learned a long time ago, years and years, decades ago. A long time ago, they learned, if not hundreds of years ago. If we're going to bring in our new world order, we're going to have to divide the country. Huh? We have to divide the country. And how better to divide the country but to have more than one party? And to get those two parties to fight against each other. Divide and conquer. So whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you're following the same, the same drum no matter what side you're on. I'm going to say it again. God is not into politics. God is not a Republican or a Democrat. His kingdom is not of this world. Wake up, people! His kingdom's not of this world. Isn't that what Jesus said? My kingdom's not of this world. And he told us to pray that the will of God would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. It makes me sick to my stomach to see people that say that they are following Jesus and they're so caught up in the politics of this world. You believe the lie. You got duped. 
You became part of the system. And yes, the system of the beast. Amen. You're listening to great swelling words of men's wisdom. And they're taking advantage of you. Jesus will never take advantage of you. The Lord will never take advantage of you. Amen. It's the truth, people. He only wants what's best for you. Amen. I don't think anything else needs to be said in this message. It's up to you. You're going to keep rejecting the word? You're going to keep rejecting the truth? Are you going to wake up? Nowhere in the scripture does it say I've got to be a Republican to be saved. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell me that I've got to vote to be saved. But I do see in the scripture where it says, come out of her, my people. Have nothing to do with her. Be not partakers of her sins. Her sins have reached unto heaven. If you're part of the political system, you're part of the beast. You're part of the beast. Come out of her. Come out of her. You're being allured. You're being allured through the lust of the flesh. Amen. It's the truth. Through their wantness. They're making merchandise of you. All I can do is just keep on trying to wake you up. But I can't wake you up. You don't want to wake up. That's your choice. Jesus came to the disciples three times, found them asleep. He couldn't get them to stay awake until it was too late. 